there was the idea of socialism before 1917 October in the world. There was the socialist ideology. There was the idea of communism set out by Marx and Engels before October 1917. But it is October 1917 which established socialism in the world as a material reality. That is why from 1917 to 2017, we are observing or commemorating a century of socialism, a century of socialist revolutions, a century of struggles for socialism. That is the significance of the October Revolution. The October Revolution opened a new epoch in human history. Before October 1917, what was the world at that time? Four-fifths of humanity was under colonial rule of imperialist powers. You had the biggest of them, the British Empire, the Russian Empire was the second largest empire in the world. Then you had the French Empire, you had the German Empire, and many other imperialist powers which had colonized different parts of the world. Therefore, the October Revolution was the first to challenge imperialism and to overthrow an imperialist power and to liberate many nationalities from colonial rule. Because the Tsarist Empire was not just Russia. There were 100 nations and nationalities who were ruled by the Russian Empire. So 1917 heralded the end of the old style colonialism in the world. It opened the floodgates in the 20th century for the peoples of the colonies to struggle for national liberation, to overthrow imperialist rule and to attain independence. And India was one of those countries which followed in the wake of the October Revolution in conducting its national liberation struggle. The October Revolution showed for the first time that you can have a revolution where the exploited classes in society, the exploited people in society can make a revolution and overthrow the rule of the exploiting classes. There were revolutions earlier in history before the October Revolution. But all those revolutions were revolutions conducted by one rising exploiting class to overthrow the older exploiting class. The greatest of those revolutions was the French Revolution of 1789. When the rising bourgeoisie as a class overthrew feudalism and feudal monarchy in Europe. But the Russian Revolution was different. And that is why we say it opened a new chapter in human history. So the October Revolution unleashed the anti-imperialist wave of revolutions in the 20th century. And the October Revolution also unleashed a wave of democracy in the 20th century. Till then, what we had was a bourgeois form of democracy, which actually limited and restricted the rights of the people. It was the October Revolution which, by liberating the mass of the peasantry from the landlord yoke, opened up a new democratic system. It was the October Revolution which declared 
that women have equal rights in all spheres of society and gave women the right to vote much before the oldest so-called bourgeois democracy in Great Britain, which gave the right to vote to women 11 years after the October Revolution. It was the October Revolution which declared that the working class has the basic right of an eight-hour day declared by law, which said men and women will get equal wages, which gave the people of the Soviet Union the right to education, the right to health, the right to equal opportunity in all spheres of society. That is why the October Revolution, which is seen as a dictatorship, which established a dictatorship, according to the bourgeois circles, was actually the revolution which unleashed the democratic impulses all over the world. And its impact was felt even in the Western capitalist societies, which finally had to concede the right to work, the right to education, the right to health, the right to social welfare benefits after the example set by the Soviet Union and because of the working class movements which developed all over the world, that these bourgeois governments and rulers had to accept that democracy does not mean only the right to vote, but democracy has to provide for equal rights in other spheres of society. The greatest danger to democracy arose in the 20th century through the rise of fascism. Fascism sought to establish a total terroristic dictatorship, abolishing all democracy and democratic rights. And that evil of fascism in the 20th century was defeated not by these bourgeois democracies, but by socialism, by the Soviet Union and all the other communist and socialist forces around the world. It was not only the Soviet Union and the Red Army which smashed the Nazi armies and Nazi fascism. The Japanese fascists were defeated in China by the communist-led Red Army there. All over Europe, where Nazis occupied most of Europe, it was the communist partisans who led the struggle in France, in Italy, in the former Yugoslavia, in Greece, in fighting back and driving out the Nazi oppressors or occupiers. So in the 20th century, the role of socialism with the Soviet Union at its head in fighting fascism is what saved the world from the barbarism of fascism for which humanity will be ever grateful. It is the October Revolution which laid the grounds for the rise of revolutionary working class movements all around the world. The formation of communist parties, the formation of workers' parties around the world began as a process after the October Revolution. And the impact of the October Revolution was felt in every country, in every part of the world. In India, too, we have seen the direct impact of the October Revolution on our anti-imperialist struggle, on our freedom movement, in the formation of the working class movement in India. In 1918 onwards, you can see how the working class began to organize themselves all over India. And the direct impact of the October Revolution was felt in all the major 
cities and working class centers of India then, including in Chennai. Within six months of the October Revolution, the first trade union in India, the Madras Labor Union, was formed in 1918 in April. It was the impact of the October Revolution which produced the first communists in India, including the first communist in South India, Singaravela, who later became, as you know, who became the president of the Madras Labor Union to start with, and then ended up as one of the founders of the communist movement in our country. And it is the impact of the October Revolution which fired up the freedom fighters of our country. Earlier, Comrade Nalakandu mentioned Subramanya Bharati's poem, which came just weeks after the October Revolution. It was the first poem in praise of the new Russia. And it came from Tamil Nadu, from Subramanya Bharati. And it is this current, revolutionary current, which spread all over the world, which also developed the working class movement, the communist movement, and the left movement in our country. All shades of the freedom struggle, whether they were in the Congress party or they were the various revolutionary groups outside the Congress party, all of them were inspired by the October Revolution to fight against British rule. Bhagat Singh and his group of revolutionaries when they were facing trial, the last trial which sentenced them to death, on Lenin's birthday, sent a telegram from the courthouse to Russia, greeting the people of Russia, greeting the working class of Russia on Lenin's day. And as you know, just before Bhagat Singh was taken to be hanged, when the jailers came to take him, he first said, stop, I have to finish reading this book. It was a book on the life of Lenin before he went to get hanged. So this is the powerful influence, the impetus which the October Revolution gave to our anti-imperialist movement in India. The product of this revolution, the Soviet Union, ceased to exist in 1991. The end of the Soviet Union was proclaimed to be the end of socialism and Marxism in the world. All the bourgeois ideologues declared that this is the end of history. There's no more history after this. There's only liberal bourgeois capitalism in world history. But the Soviet Union as a system or a state ended. It is a fact. But the fall or the end of the Soviet Union does not mean an end to the socialist ideology. It does not end, mean an end to socialism in the world today. Neither does it mean an end to the revolutionary ideology of Marxism and Leninism. We have seen in the 25 years after the fall of the Soviet Union, it is now exactly 25 years, in this 25 years, history has not ended. Imperialism has unleashed more aggressive wars on the world. We saw wars in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Libya, now in Syria. All these are wars which are part of the imperialist attempts to control resources, loot these peoples and their territories. We have seen in this last 25 years, how neoliberal capitalism has heightened inequalities. 1% of the world's population today controls more than 65 times the wealth of the bottom half of the world's population. That is, one half of the world's population's total assets and wealth is 65 times more 1% of the world richest people control today. So we are facing 
in the 21st century, all the iniquities, all the evils, all the exploitation that we saw in the 20th century also. And that is why we say that this new epoch, which was opened in October 1917, that epoch is not over. The struggle for socialism, the struggle for an end to the capitalist system, that struggle continues in the world today. It continues in Asia, it continues in Latin America, it continues in Europe, and it continues in Africa. All over the world today we are seeing struggles and movements against neoliberal capitalism, against inequalities, against imperialist subjugation, and against social oppression. And as long as we have this beacon light of the October Revolution of 1917, we will continue to be able to advance towards the only alternative for humanity, the only alternative to capitalism, which is socialism. This is the message and this is the struggle and campaign that we have to carry forward in the coming days. The end of the Soviet Union was an end of a socialist experiment which began with the October Revolution. We have to draw the correct lessons from this failure. Despite the tremendous achievements and potential which was there of the world's first socialist state, various defects took, came into being, various distortions in the development of socialism in the Soviet Union. We have to draw the lessons from that to see that we go towards a renewed, renovated form of socialism in the 21st century. Today is not the day to, for us to discuss that because we have decided that we shall conduct this centenary campaign year of the October Revolution from today to the next year's November 7th, 2017. And in this one year, we shall involve all the progressive and left-minded people in our country to discuss about how we can go towards, advance towards the struggle for socialism in India. What should be the socialism in Indian conditions that we want to strive for. These are issues which we shall be discussing in this centenary year. Millions of people in India, millions of workers, peasants, agricultural workers, and other sections of the working people are today still committed to and have faith in the socialist vision. And we shall use this centenary year to mobilize all the resources that we have to see that we will open the way towards advancing on the path of socialism in India. So, on the occasion of November 7th, 99 years of the October Revolution today, I extend my warm greetings to all of you and I hope that in the coming year we shall be able to go forward, advance towards a concept of socialism for India in the 21st century and successfully struggle to make it a reality. Thank you very much.